Hi citizens, one and all. Welcome to the stack. Thanks loyal subjects for joining us. Now, cut to the chase. Why am I bringing back the stack for those who watch regularly? Thanks for asking, voice in my head. Um, I felt that the time was right. It's practically inevitable. I mean, when you think about it, it it's like in comic continuity. Who, who really stays gone, right? So, I got my last dose of Miraku out of storage, you know, mixed in some goblin formula, and here we are. Uh, beside that, there are big doings going on in the industry. Uh, a whole slew of relaunches, new takes on obscure favorites that haven't been seen in a while. Uh, consequently, there is some reshuffling going on to make room and try new things. I can sum all this up in one word. Dynamite. Okay, there are, there are two more that come to mind, and they are Gold Key. Uh, that is what Dynamite Comics is calling its new initiative, which encompasses uh, four characters with notable followings. Somebody remembers them anyway. We got Magnus, Robot Fighter, we got Magnus, Robot Fighter, right there, that's him. And let's see, we got Turok, Dinosaur Hunter, And uh, Solar Man of the Atom uh, and uh, Doctor Specker, Doctor Specter, uh, those are still to come out. But uh, these aren't entirely the characters you knew or may have, and they have some of the top writers working on them: Fred Ben Lenti, Greg Pak, Mark Wade, who already has put his talents to good use on Green Hornet for Dynamite. You know each. Each is uh, infusing a little more melodrama and humor, uh, which uh, which I'll get to. First, I want to address uh, the changes occurring, or sacrifices made, if you will. Uh, for one, pulps are going out the door, or you know at least taking a back seat. Uh, they're coming out more as mini series, like like the owl here. That just keeps happening to me. Uh, or, you know, Shadow Now, which uh, his last issue is uh, coming out in a little bit. Or just being canceled, like one of my favorite books, The Spider, which uh, this is the last issue right here. And uh, others suffer from uncertainty currently, uh, like the Black Bat, which ships extremely late about it, you know, about as extremely late as, as I am bringing out these issues. It's a stack. That's why it's called the stack. Black Bat, the most latest issue that I picked up. It uh, ships light off, and then it's writer Brian Booch, Brian Bouchelotto, actually, some good news. He's moving over to Batman, and uh, he's going to be working for DC. Can't wait to see what he's got there, and he's, he's got this gig because of the Black Bat. And Black Bat's fate is up in the air, which no one has really talked about what is going to happen with the series, but uh, I hope for the best. It's a phenomenal book, and it's the reason Booch is moving up. Totally. I mean, if he hadn't done this book, they wouldn't be looking at him, seriously. Now, uh, without solo books to speak of, a tendency uh, arises to throw all the characters or introduce new ones in one title. Dynamite's been doing that for some for some time, from time to time, and uh, whether it's King's Watch or Masks, which is already out in the omnibus, uh, and that's, you know, where their other big new book, uh, Legendary, is coming from. I have a copy of that. 
I gotta copy legendary right here. Boom, that's uh, Red Sonia or Red Sonia's sister in a very tight, tightly, nicely, tightly fitting corset. And, uh, of course, uh, the whole steampunk school of thought plays into that, too. Uh, and, but that, that springs on its own for a prevalent urge to do the Victorian version of everything, uh, regardless of anime influence. And, uh, Legendary so far, uh, it throws a new character at us every issue with uh, Red Sonia and her sister, uh, her erstwhile sister, tying it all together as they bump into new heroes. Just about every character, Phantom, Green Hornet, the Six Million Dollar Man, adjusted for inflation, of course, it is the uh, 19th century. Anyone who had a strip or a radio or TV show is slated to show up in a top hat, a corset, riding in a wagon or dirigible. It's a blimp. It's fancy talk for a blimp. Uh, the dialogue is only slightly more formal than usual, uh, so Legendary is not beyond the pale to work with, but I won't go. I might not go out of my way to pick it up, not to be blunt. Uh, but you know, got to keep things rolling here. Uh, to the main course. Magnus. Uh, Magnus recently hit shelves and is one of the first out the gate. Uh, he's probably undergone the most alterations. All I hear from friends is, where's the skirt? <laughs> Which, you know, Magnus originally uh, battled machines wearing a tunic and go-go boots. Which, uh, not missed. I don't miss them. Not really. And uh, Fred Van Lenti, he puts a witty spin on what is uh, abstractly a dystopian concept, which is what he's known for in injecting humor. And, you know, he, if you've read Deadpool, you've seen him do it. It's not awfully unique or new. Every story such as Magnus owes something to the Asimov School of Fiction or Blade Runner or whatever. Still, it uh, kept the twists coming, offering more gray area that just... Robots bad, humans good. And I really like that, I appreciate that. Uh, the book isn't like that at all, actually. Magnus will have to fight humans as well, and I can't wait to see what happens next. It's, it's a guy trashing robots with Taekwondo, you gotta love that. And there's a really cool backstory about the, the robot that saved him and raised him, and uh, it's, 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 it's lighthearted in a lot of ways. It has its quirks. Uh, on to on to Turok, which uh, uh, you know I heard of Turok before. Uh, first from the video game, I think it was for Nintendo 64, uh, which looked really intense. And then then The Rock uh, about a decade ago was slated to play him in a movie that never got made. One of many that he was attached to. He was supposed to play Captain Marvel and then Black Adam, and that never happened either. Uh, this new series is the latest to come from uh, the franchise, the Rock, not The Rock, uh, in, a, in a couple of years. And like Dwayne, it just uh, doesn't seem to be going away. It, uh, but it, it differs from what I imagined. It's more melodramatic than dark. There's lots of background about Turok, his tribe, his family, his status in the community. He's essentially living on the margins, removed from everyone. Uh, this, this loner in the woods, his community looks at as a weirdo, you know, partially because he, no one believes him about the, the dinosaurs out there and what thought ex what once thought extinct creatures have to do with it all isn't entirely clear yet and. It is almost secondary, uh, getting lost among this quasi-New World narrative, you know, like like before Columbus discovered America type of deal, and Templar Knights are showing up on the scene. Uh, Truck might find its footing, just don't know if I'll be there to see it. And again, uh, Dr. Spectre and Solar are coming soon, and I'm, I'm looking forward to Spectre more, and I'll just here, try and bring that one out if I can find that. These not great blurbs in the back. Uh, shoot, shoot. No, that must have been in, uh, must have been in Magnus.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's still... I'm not going to waste your time uh, too much flipping through comics, but uh, this is what you have to bear with, and uh, who knows, this might become a meme. You might uh, just uh, put that on repeat, a uh, shuffle of me just flipping pages, which would be really funny, you folks out there. Ah, uh, yes, but anyway, here, Dr. Specter, Master of the Occult. Uh, uh, you know, Mark Wade is writing it, um, he's done great work on Green Hornet, like I said, so you know it'll be good. Uh, he, he sort of is taking a paranormal investigator type and putting him in a scenario similar to Houdini when he was on a crusade discrediting seances and mediums. Um, he's got a massive fortune and he's, he's using it to approach uh, the supernatural in a very scientific, uh, objective way. Uh, Wade's bringing a lot to the table and is enthusiastic about revisiting these characters and I'm, I'm right there with him. I hope that rubs off on readers and has us coming back. I'm always on the lookout for new titles to get excited about, uh, that I can hopefully stay with a while. A lot of stuff I read gets cancelled. It's just the nature of the industry. And Gold Key has a chance to give me that opportunity, hopefully without getting cancelled uh, too prematurely. And uh, Dynamite has a great track record also of cancelling titles, but uh, they're still good books. They're still great, wonderful books. And, uh, well... We've reached the bottom of my stack. That means it's a wrap for me. And check these titles out at your nearest brick and mortar comics or uh, den or Comic Con, wherever you happen to pick up comics. Maybe online. A lot of people are doing that these days. Uh, this might show up online. I'll see to it somehow. As soon as I can master this thing on the internet, this thing called the internet. Uh, I think it's on computers now, but we'll see. Uh, pick that and other books, including uh, this. The Six Million Dollar Man, Season 6, it's another recent release from Dynamite. Joss Whedon with Buffy Season 8, or whatever it was. See what you started? See? This is what happens. And they're incorporating a lot of action figures that never, uh, and characters that never made it into the show, but were supposed to. Um, I, I hope I really am going to enjoy this one. I haven't read it yet. I will. I'll let you know. And tell me what you think. I mean, you know, there's... Not everybody's gonna agree with me. Most of you, most of you will probably disagree with me and uh, leave me a lot of hate mail or just uh, negative comments. That's fine. I mean, get them all the time. Just uh, try and keep it PG, please. And, well, but we love to hear from you. And uh, till next time, I'm tapping out right now and see you in the funnies.